All right, so this is our second video in 14.3. Um, so let's discuss the continuity of each function. So we gotta say where it's continuous and where it's not. Um, and then if it's not, then we gotta classify it as removable or non-removable. So what numbers would you not be allowed to plug in for x in that function? Well, you can't use plus or minus one. And there's nothing you can do. You can't really factor this to get things to cancel out. Um, so that'll tell you what kind of classification it is. So it's continuous everywhere else except for these two numbers. So negative infinity to negative one, negative one to one, and one to infinity. Your discontinuities, so we said before that was the plus or minus one. So you're telling me where the discontinuities are. It's not asking for the domain. If it was the domain, you could say x is not equal to, but I wanna know where the discontinuities are. So if you say x can't equal plus or minus one on a discontinuity, that means you're telling me everywhere else would be a, a discontinuity. So this is a domain notation, this is the discontinuity notation. And as we said earlier, you can't do anything to this function to make these two values kind of disappear. So you can't remove them. So that would be a non-removable discontinuity. So you can just label it as NR uh, for non-removable or just R for removable. All right, so part G, we know X can't equal positive or negative four. So the continuity of the function is always gonna be dependent on the original function. So even if it factors and stuff cancels out, your continuity and the domain always come from the original function. So it's still, it's continuous on negative infinity to negative four, negative four to four, and four to infinity. Now you can start talking about your discontinuity. So now you can start to do something. So like if you factored the denominator, your x minus fours cancel out and you're left with one over x plus four. So you still have those two values that we couldn't use in the beginning, negative four and four, but one of them got removed from the function. So the one that makes it zero in the denominator still after you cancel stuff out, that's the non-removable, it's still in there, so that's the negative four. And the one that isn't there anymore, the one that got removed, that's the positive four. All right, now part C, um, <clears throat> this one, you can plug anything you want in a cosine, that's fine. So it's continuous everywhere. And on D, you have x squared plus one in the denominator. So that denominator is never gonna equal zero. So it's continuous everywhere else. Now some of you might be going, well, what about negative one? Well, if you square negative one, you normally get one. And one plus one is not zero, it's two. So you can plug any number you want, because if you square it, it's always a positive. And a positive plus one never is equal to zero. All right, so let's talk about the concept of a one-sided limit. So one-sided limit means you're coming in from just the left or just the right, not the two together. So limit from the left means that x approaches c, from values smaller than C. And then to denote it, so you know you're coming in from just the left, it's the limit as X approaches and then it's C with a little negative, kind of where the exponent is. 
And that's the only way to tell or denote that it's coming in from the left. So it's a slight alteration on the notation, so you have to really pay attention. Now the limit from the right, you can probably guess what goes in the blanks, uh, means that you're approaching x from, uh, x approaches c from values bigger than c, and then the limit is denoted as x approaches c with a positive. All right, so let's go ahead and try a few of these out. So your goal is still the same. You still wanna be able to try to plug this number in for x, uh, whether it's a one-sided or two-sided, like you don't care. If you can plug it in, plug it in. So this four can go right in there. And 12 minus eight is four. So on B, you have four from the left. Well, if you plug that in, that's gonna give you a result and it comes out as 39. So this one, plug in the six, six minus six is zero. Square root of zero is zero. On D, you can plug in the negative one and you get ln of one, which is zero. On E, plug in the zero. Sine of zero is zero. Square root of zero is also zero. Okay, now F, plug in the zero. Oh, shoot, now you can't. So you can't plug in the zero there, and there's nothing you can do to factor or get things to simplify it. So if you can't manipulate it, use a graph. And some of you have never seen that function before, which is fine. So if you're going, what the heck do I do with that? If you don't know what it looks like, then your only recourse of action is to start plotting points. So like if x is one, plug it into the function and it comes out as one. If you plug it in x equals two, you get one again. X is equal to three, you get one. If you plugged in like uh, 35, you get one. So if x is larger than zero, it's stuck right at one. Now if you plugged in the negatives, like a negative one, the y value comes out as negative one. If you plugged in negative two, you get negative two and so on and so forth. So if you plug in smaller, number, uh, smaller than zero, it's a negative one. So as you evaluate the graph, as you come in from just the right side, that's approaching the value of one. If it was from the left side, it equaled negative one. And if it was a two-sided limit, it would not exist. So I'll go ahead and stop the video here. And then in the next one, we're gonna look at a big giant graph and get lots of limits from it.